So as you see before you is our logging camp. And these buildings, as you can see, they're all uh, the same size, roughly. They're designed like that to go on a rail car. And then when they get to the site, wherever they're going to, where these are going to be set up, uh, they actually skid them through the forest or through the uh, landing. So they all are, uh, have skids underneath them. Inside each of these buildings, it's a different portrayal of what life was like for a logger uh, back in the day. So we have a bunkhouse where they sleep. We have a filer shop where they uh, filed the saws. We have a surveyor, we have the cookhouse. So we'll go into those individual buildings and you can see a little bit more in depth what they are. Welcome to the Forest Discovery Center Schoolhouse. This schoolhouse was built in 1905 and transferred here to the Forest Discovery Center in about 1985. This is a model school. This uh, school, so the model school program was in Vancouver. And when the model school program finished in 1985, they were demolishing some of the buildings and they, we were offered this building for $1. Costs a little bit more to have it transported, but that's, uh, that's how things are. This building can be taken apart panel by panel. Each section can be flat packed onto a rail car. You could actually order this building out of a catalog and have it shipped to anywhere you want in British Columbia. This building here is our West Home Post Office. And this building came to us in about 1973 when they, uh, the community of West Home got too big for this post office to manage the quantity of mail that was coming through. So they, uh, they brought this, uh, this building here and we're thankful to have it. Uh, West Home is still a thriving community here just north of Duncan. This uh, is typical for a bunkhouse, uh, for the, either the logging camps or the mining camps. They pretty well all use the same types of buildings. Uh, some of these buildings came from Copper Canyon, just north of uh, Duncan and south of Nanaimo, or they came from the Nanaimo Lakes area, but they were all used for, uh, for that purpose. This particular building that you see is the sleeping accommodations. This is where men would come, but uh, back in the day, they didn't have electric lights. These were put in after. Some of these buildings, if they, sorry, some of these logging camps, um, if there was a lot of men there, they would have to bunk up uh, to eight men instead of what you see here, four men to a room. So eight men on this side, eight men on the other side, and one stove in the middle to keep them warm. This is your typical uh, cookhouse. And this is where food was prepared uh, for the men. They would have breakfast here. Uh, they would have their lunch out in the forest and then they would come back here for supper. Quite often it was a very long day, sometimes from six o'clock in the morning to like eight o'clock at night before they ate. Four men usually worked in this side of the building. Uh, there would be the cook, the kitchen mechanic who washed the dishes, um, the flunky, he was the one that would go and um, uh, get the water from the from the lake or the stream and then uh, we had another flunky that would actually do the serving of the food but the cook was the main person in here uh, that prepared the food the food uh, obviously had to feed a lot of men so they had a lot of coffee pots and big pots things like that they also had funny sayings for some of their food eggs were cackleberries uh, raisin bread was called fly bread because they weren't really sure whether it was flies or raisins. Mud was uh, the good coffee, tar was the bad coffee. But they ate very good. If they had good food in a logging camp, they got good workers. If they had bad food, poor workers. This section of the cookhouse is called the dining hall. And as you can see, it's about 20 people that ate here. They could often do this in shifts because there could be up to 100 men in a, in a camp. They would often have one whole building that was just the dining hall. But for our purposes here, uh, it was just a small, small setup. But if they had a lot of men, they would do it in shifts if they didn't have enough seating area. So the fallers would get the best food and the flunkies would get any food left over. And quite often by the time they got to eat, it was cold. 
So this room that you're looking at here is our first aid station. And back in the day before we had a lot of safety equipment, no hard hats, no safety toed boots, no high vis vests. This is where the men would come when they got injured, either broken leg, broken arm, or other major uh, um, injuries. If the man was uh, injured out in the forest, uh, they would have to be brought in on the stretcher. So they would have to take two men off of the crew and bring the injured men into the thing. They could be walking through the forest up to a mile, sometimes two miles through the forest. If the injury was too bad, uh, they would have to take them by rail uh, into town to a hospital. So this room is uh, the timekeeper's office. And this is where basically the, the office of the entire logging camp took place. This gentleman looked after payroll. He looked after any money going to the government. Back in those days, we didn't have Visa, MasterCard, credit cards, anything like that. So everything was done by cash. So we had a, a very large safe here that they kept all the money and uh, very uh, sensitive documents here. He was also the first aid attendant. So he was pretty well the only man besides the cook back here at the camp uh, when operations were going.